Angela Gonzalez. And I'm Teresa Adams Lopez. Welcome to Water Watch. This is the Port of Los Angeles. This is the Port of Los Angeles. And this is the Port of Los Angeles. This is the Port of Los Angeles. This is the Port of Los Angeles, delicious. And this is the Port of Los Angeles. We're 300 feet up at the Port of Los Angeles. All of this is the Port of Los Angeles. So many facets and faces, but one thing in common we have is water, water everywhere. Water quality testing has been in place here at the Port of Los Angeles for more than 50 years. And considering all of its uses and everywhere it's come from, the water in the Port of Los Angeles is really remarkably clean. But it hasn't always been this way, and if we aren't careful, it won't stay that way. So important steps are being taken to ensure that it is. Today we're going to learn about where the water pollution at the Port of Los Angeles comes from, what's being done to control it, and what you can do from where you live and work to help us. We're also going to learn about something called the RAP what it means for the future, and what it means for the people that live and work here on the water, or even under the water. Welcome, Welcome to Water Watch! And this is the Port of Los Angeles too. We're at Cabrillo Beach where families like to hang out and enjoy the beach, sand and sun. Just a stone throws away is the Cabrillo shallow habitat where birds, plants, sea life also hang out. And all right here at the busiest cargo port in the nation. The question of water quality and habitat is, is important here because uh, although one looks at the port and really sees industrial uses and quite a uh, high level of industrial uses, the water through which those industrial uses travel uh, is a habitat for a lot of not only marine life, but even in fact under the port's control are our public beaches where we have uh, human interaction with the water from all sorts of levels, just from, from getting into the water yourself towards all the other water sporting activities. And so we really are bringing all sorts of people down here to see the water and to be a part of its activities and interact with it as well as all the industrial activities that are going on and so the quality of the water is important um, it, it's just really it is the lifeline of, of humanity and lifeline of the universe and so our recognition of that and our recognition of what has been done in the past and what needs to be cleaned up because today's standards are so different is is critical to improving it for a whole lot more of generations to come Keeping the Port of Los Angeles environmentally clean is no easy task. One reason why is because it's big. Over the past hundred years, the port has grown into a city unto itself, with over 7,500 acres of land and 43 miles of waterfront. It has cargo terminals, rail lines, storage yards, containers, warehouses, a cruise terminal, commercial buildings, a fishing fleet, marinas, retail, and restaurants. What's more, there's a major flood control channel, the Dominguez Channel, that drains more than 100 square miles of densely populated urban and industrial land uses, and it gets deposited, you guessed it, right here. And you thought you had a big backyard to clean up. This is a 20-foot container. It's the unit of measurement that we use to keep track of container volume in and out of the port every year. In fact, last year, millions of these came through the Port of Los Angeles. More than 40% of all the goods entering and leaving the United States actually come through the San Pedro Bay ports. And when it comes to the environment, we're working hard to make sure it's clean in the air, on the land, and in the water. When I first came to work in the 70s, I used to go out and sample the water quality in the port. We would be so excited if we found oxygen in the water. That meant something was living there um, because the water was so polluted back then. So uh, I'm quite pleased about the fact that, you know, through those, those decades, you know, into the 80s, we really improved the water quality. We've got great water quality. This harbor is a um, home for all sorts of, of fish and organisms that live in the water, but it, there's still more we can do in terms of the water and the sediments. I'm really pleased that the wrap is in place because it's really going to guarantee that uh, we'll have better water quality moving forward. It's kind of a longer term vision. Um, it's a multi-agency plan. We brought in the EPA. We brought in the Los Angeles Regional Water Quality Control Board along with all the city forces so we could work together from the very beginning and forge that partnership that would deliver a long term plan. 
In 2006, the Port of Los Angeles initiated in its vast construction and maintenance yard something called an EMS. Barb, can you tell us what EMS stands for and what it's all about? The Environmental Management System, EMS, was designed here at CNM to have employees have input and understand what their impacts are and to minimize those environmental impacts. An official policy was adopted by the board establishing our goals here at the harbor. All of our CNM employees have that in their pocket so that they can remember what our ultimate goal is. And then they have designed specific measures that address environmental issues that are summarized. And then we have these EMS stations five throughout the yard that have all of the environmental documents, our stormwater prevention plan, all the things that we need to do to prevent stormwater, um, our, our spill prevention and control plan. In addition, the employees can make suggestions such as coming up with a rainy day checklist where they have a checklist before it rains, when we anticipate rain, so that they can make sure that all of the trash can lids are covered, that they have good housekeeping, that all the cans and storage things are brought inside. That way we have a reminder so that we can make sure that we're minimizing water pollution. And this is part of the EMS, the spill kit? Can yes, you explain it to me a little bit? Sure. The spill kit is a unit we have here that will help us contain any spills or any leaks that happen over in this area. We have the gloves to put on to protect your hands, we have the goggles to protect your eyes, and we have the putty that will go into the, uh, if you have a drum here on your vehicle, they will go into a hole to stop it up until you can get it drained properly. And containing the leaks is important? Oh yes, so we don't get it in the water, we don't get it in any of the environmental dirt, anything, so we make sure we get it all contained before it gets any further than where it needs to get. So it all stays here, okay. Okay, so we also have the socks that you put around, and the sock is a, a, a tubular unit that you put around the spill. Is it like a big tube sock? It's like a big tube sock, and <laughs> okay. what you do, you just put it around the spill, and it contains it, and then you would put this in the middle of it, to soak it up. And this is real absorbent, it will soak antifreeze, oil, dirty water, whatever needs to be soaked, it will be soaked up. We are standing in a containment unit. It was specially designed to hold at least 5,000 gallons of fuel or anything that would leak. And that's why the drain is like this. So it makes everything drain right here and it's got a shut off valve in it. Before it goes in. Before it goes in anything. So it, it can be sucked out so that everything's taken care of the proper way. So it doesn't hit the water. And I'm here today with Barb Garrett. Thank you for joining us today. Pleasure. To learn a, bit, a little bit more about the port, its uh, catch basin system, where it goes, how it's disposed of, and what we're doing to clean up the environment. Okay. okay, can you tell me a little bit about the catch basin? The catch basins are designed to take any water flow after a rainstorm to prevent flooding in the yard and throughout the city of Los Angeles on our streets. Okay. We clean out the storm drains at least annually, once annually, to try to take that trash out to make sure that it doesn't get washed to the ocean, especially in large storm events. Now I notice there's an insignia in front of this catch basin. Is that important? Well, it's an educational tool to help us make sure that people keep the areas clean. And about how many storm drains are located throughout the We have the port? A, over a thousand storm drains in the Port of Los Angeles alone. They have six of the storm drains here with special inserts. And the inserts are very special. They not only catch the trash and the sediment, but they also have a cloth at the bottom that you can see that um, collects oil and grease. So any oil and grease that may be on a parking lot from a vehicle that was parked or anything like that gets washed in and it gets captured. So it's not just the pollution that you can see, it's actually the things that may be dissolved in the water. Um, annually, we take about 2.5 tons of trash out of the storm drains and dispose of it, so that's being prevented from getting to the ocean. Okay, so all drains lead to the ocean? Absolutely. So we all must do our part to keep things out of the street and the gutters and... It takes everybody. It takes everybody. Well, thank you very much, Paul, for you. joining us today. So here in CNM, they deal with a lot of different kind of materials and some of them even hazardous. Rick is here to explain a little bit about how they handle the hazardous materials. This is actually the, the one spot where it is controlled, it's locked, and this is where the, the real hazardous stuff that can't be recycled is stored back here for uh, a group like an uh, outside group that comes and actually handles and takes it away. We work on boats and streets and roofs and everything else around here. In the paint shop, we only have a couple of materials that we actually use that's hazardous waste. All the paints that we use nowadays, most of it is uh, latex, so it's water soluble. And we do a lot of recycling over there. We clean it out our own buckets and everything else. And that can be all recycled. The water, uh, rinse water from pumps and other things uh, can actually be recycled. We have a special barrel for that. And then even some of the paint that's left over 
um, the latex paints are put into another barrel and that can be reused uh, down at the recycling center. And then just a few that is hazardous will go over here. We store it back here, it's locked. That's yeah, back here away from the water and everything else. That drain down there is actually a tank down there so it's not going into the water and it's all monitored and everything else. You may have heard what the Port of Los Angeles is doing to improve the air. Cargo ships are using cleaner burning fuels when approaching the port. Trucks entering the port are less polluting than ever before. There are even electric trucks that move cargo around the port without using an ounce of fossil fuel. More and more at the Port of Los Angeles, cargo ships are turning off their polluting diesel engines and plugging into shoreside electrical power instead. That's called Alternative Maritime Power, or AMP for short. While an awful lot has been accomplished over the years to control pollution, there is so much more to do. With an operation this vast, where does the water pollution come from? And more importantly, what is being done to control it today and tomorrow? 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, the Port of Los Angeles is a hard-working place. Everywhere you look, you see ships docking, cargo being loaded and unloaded, big trucks coming and going by the hundreds, trains rolling in and out. Obviously, it's pretty easy for operations like this to leave plenty of dirt, trash, and grit behind on the ground. And if that happens, it would be easy enough just to grab a big hose and wash it into the water, right? Not according to Tim Clark, the construction and maintenance manager for the Port of Los Angeles, who will tell us how street sweeping operations help keep pollution off the streets and out of our water. Well, street sweeping is our first line of defense. In order to keep the trash out of the catch basin and ultimately out of the water, we want to pick it up before it even gets there. At the Port of LA, we have two vehicles such as this CNG-powered street sweeper that patrol our streets almost every day. I've got to get me one of these. Today I'm with Larry, part of the street maintenance operations team at the Port of Los Angeles, and he's going to tell us a little bit about the truck. So Larry, how much does this truck actually pick up? Well, I'm picking up on about five cubic feet of debris daily. Okay, and for someone like me, what does that equate to? That equates to about a small Volkswagen Beetle. Okay, and so how long does it actually take you to go all the way around the port to clean it? One complete week. So it's 52 weeks a year, seven days a week, the port gets scrubbed clean. Yes. Okay, now that's keeping the debris off of our streets and out of our water. But no matter what, trash can still get into the water. But when it does, the trash skimmer boat is on the job. Dan here is going to explain to us a little bit about the boat. Uh, basically what we have is a conveyor belt which we can lower into the harbor and skim the trash and loads into this uh, conveyor in the back and slowly moves the trash to the back of the container as we fill up. Uh, we have two arms in the front that open up wide enough to capture trash. Basically it's almost like a trash harvester. So it's like a street sweeper for the water. Exactly. We try to take it out at least twice a week in the mornings when it's not too windy. It's better for us to pick up the trash at the different tide changes because some of the trash collects when the tide goes down. And then when it comes back up, the trash comes out and that's a better time for us to pick it up. And what is the piece of trash that you see the most often? I think we see more Cheeto bags than anything else. <laughs> so I guess Cheetos are real popular in the harbor. Can we go out and see it in action? Absolutely. This boat is better because it's faster, it covers a larger area of the harbor, and it's a little bit more efficient. We don't have to dump it as often as we did when we cleaned by hand. We try to take it out at least twice a week. Usually when it's windy and rainy, we have a lot more trash in the harbor to pick up. Now that we're cleaning the harbor, the sea life is more abundant here. More sea life grows on the piers and the boats. And I think it's a friendlier place all around for the environment, for the people that work here and the people that live here. And these are just a few of the things being done here at the Port of Los Angeles with the WRAP program to keep the pollution from the ground from getting into the water. And we'll learn a lot more right after this.